Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins.
beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations, and as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to fill it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may eat freely of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Romans. As sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned, sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned where there is no law. Yet death exercises dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If, because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After Jesus was baptized, he was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted forty days and forty nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So this morning in the Gospel, we're going a little bit back in time, at least as far as the chronology of the Gospels are concerned. So this story, which is so well known, takes place after Jesus is baptized and before he starts his public ministry. We could say that it really is like the beginning of the beginning of his journey to Jerusalem that we will take alongside him throughout this Lent. But this is one of those readings I have to admit that I have often wondered about, because sometimes I ask myself, really, what's the point of us hearing this story? Is it to show that Jesus is amazing? Because we do all know that that is the case. He was, just prior to this, announced as the Son of God, which means that he should have unlimited power and glory and can do all of those things that the devil who was tempting him tells him to do, but he doesn't. So. Are we supposed to think that, since Jesus avoided all of these incredible and enormous temptations, so we should also be able to avoid all temptations or fall extremely short of God's expectations for us? Because that is an interpretation of this reading that I have heard. But one thing that I have read about it that I thought was interesting and is helpful is that this passage can be or maybe should be read as a part of a larger story. In the Middle East at this time, Heroes of stories were tempted, and it's part of what is expected when someone is revealed to have extraordinary power and extraordinary authority. And if those people are not tempted, or if they are tempted and they succumb to those temptations, then maybe they aren't really who they say they are. It is an expectation, and the temptations and Jesus' ability to resist them, as well as the attention he receives from the angels immediately afterwards, show that Jesus is who he really is, the Son of God. This story from the Gospel is not about us. It is about Jesus, the Son of God, who must undergo temptation before he emerges and does great things in the world. And, as we all know, none of us are Jesus. What I think might be more important is to look for what the story reveals about Jesus. So all cultural expectations aside, As the Son of God, he really probably didn't need to be tempted. He still could have preached and healed and done all of the things that he did later on in the story. And this reading is also paired this morning with a reading from Genesis 
to highlight the contrast between Jesus, who could resist the tempter, and Adam, who could not. Jesus is presented here as a new Adam, the one who will restore our broken relationship with God. And through his sacrifice, he will make right all of the things that we have done wrong and all the ways that we have fallen short, going all the way back to the very beginning. But going back to this gospel, we hear that Jesus was tempted on specific things, things that he could do. But for each one, Jesus cites the law for why he cannot. He has come to fulfill the law, so he's not going to break it. And each time he is offered a choice between doing what would serve him well in the world and what the law requires. It would be nice to be able to turn stones into bread, because then you would never be hungry, which was certainly a concern of people in that time and in that place. And it would really be nice to have all of the kingdoms in the world and their splendor at your command, because then nobody could show you any disrespect, and you could avenge all of the wrongs and insults against you and your people if you wanted to do so. That was how things worked then. Maybe it's still how they work today. But in spite of all of that, Jesus still said no. I think it's highly unlikely, at best, that we will ever find ourselves in the position that Jesus did. I, for one, have a really hard time imagining that someday the devil will whisk me to the top of the bell tower here and say something along the lines of, all of the municipalities before you, I will give to you. Because I think I probably would be very inclined to say no thanks. There's too many potholes, uh, just too many hassles. And besides, it's, maybe it's not all that great. Maybe you could at least, I don't know, throw in Minnesota or something like that. So what the passage says about Jesus is not just that he overcame temptation, but I think maybe for us, it's that he was tempted. So Jesus knows what it is like to be tempted and to do things that we probably shouldn't. And he knows that we are more like Adam and Eve. We do give in. We do those things, whether it is maybe sneaking a forbidden chocolate that we said we would give up for Lent, or perhaps something more serious. So we are not Jesus, but Jesus also knows that. Jesus is there to walk alongside us as we fail, and, to, and as we pick ourselves up, or maybe as we are picked up by others, and to encourage us to do the hard work of resisting those temptations that will lead us further from him. And also doing the harder work of re recognizing when we don't resist and then the necessary and very humbling work of repentance that we are called to do, especially during this season. Amen. Please stand and let us recite or profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. <clears throat> it proceeds from the Father and the Son. Father and the Son. <clears throat> he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
we continue with the Trilogue Prayer in your bulletin. Please join me. Almighty God, we come before you to add grace and wisdom for all who are called to discern your mission for the Church in Wisconsin. Guide us to listen to one another in humility and to always seek your will. We pray in the name of Jesus, the head of the church. Amen. We continue with our parish prayer list. We pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, Matt, our bishop provisional, and Mike, our rector. And we pray for our parish families, especially Carolyn, Reverend Ann and Jack, Scott, Mary, Adam, Jack, and Hannah, Linda, Bill and Jane, Art, and Pat. And we pray for those celebrating birthdays, especially Salem, Jay, Dan, Lenny, Harley, and Will. We pray for healing and comfort, especially for Amy, Ann, Anne, Barbara, Burley, Colum, Chris, Dave, Dick, Ed, Eric, Jennifer, Joe, Julie, Mary, Mariah, Nathaniel, Pat, Phyllis, Richard, and Shelley. And we pray for the Scottish Episcopal Church, and we pray for the ministry of lay workers, Eucharistic ministers, and Eucharistic visitors. We continue Form 1 in the bulletin. With all of our heart and with all of our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, for the unity of all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our bishop and for all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president and for the leaders of all nations, for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and the will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for widows and orphans, for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in hope of resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all of our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you. My own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Um, 
Um, the choir anthem this morning is based on a, a very familiar hymn, but with a different tune. So I would encourage you to take out your hymnals and turn to four, hymn 439, What Wondrous Love Is This? Uh, hymn 439. So just a couple of reminders. Tonight is Compline at 7 p.m. It's going to be over there underneath the Beatitudes window. Um, Compline is a service of night prayer. It comes to us from the ancient monastic tradition, and it's just a very quiet, contemplative service of about maybe 20 minutes or so. Um, so if you feel so inclined, please join us tonight. Next week, in between the services, we are going to be having a, a uh, discussion about the trialogue and what does that mean for the parish, for the diocese, so if you have any questions or would like to um, just talk with Tim or Lee or me or with Carla, as the people, um, especially Tim, Lee, and Carla, have been very involved from the very beginning of the trilogue discussions, uh, we are just going to be talking about what it, what it might look like if we were to reunify as one diocese in this state. Um, it's next week between the two services. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries or other celebrations to note this morning? No? All right, well, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. The, <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and a good and joyful thing 
Always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.